Hello there, and welcome back to the colony with Man of the Ants. So today we are trying out. What is the year 1500? We are trying out Project Cars 2. Something I was hoping to have up last night after the game unlocked, but it just took too long to do its unencryption, un uncompression thing it does after a preload's done with a game. So that wasn't much of an option for me. So, so far, I haven't actually tried the game. All I've done is I've gone in and I've changed the controls to use my G27. I haven't checked the button config yet, so we'll see if that works. I changed, I left all of that. I did change the performance. I changed it down to 1080 rather than the 1440 it defaults to. It's really epic music, isn't it? Jesus. And I set it all to high. It was all set to pretty much low, but I think that's because it was trying to do 1440 or 165 hertz by default. And I've also left the super sample into uh, its basic option. And that's pretty much all I've done so far. I had a quick look in here. So this just does uh, the VR options. So it's whether it's going to recenter your view, that sort of thing. But it's nice that it actually has a separate VR option. It also has, if you look down there, a triple screen option as well by default. So that's quite cool. So I've not actually tried the game yet. I've just done a calibration of the wheel. So that should be fine. So let's jump in. We'll do the same. Custom offline race, yes, this please. This is where you can either select a car and track. I see, I'm even getting the little tutorial pop ups as well. Look. Or set up yep. a customized yep. race weekend. Yeah, okay. If you're you setting always, up a customized yep, race weekend. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So we need a Ford, yeah. Fear of losing is far greater than, than the, the, the fear of being hurt, and that means that you've got okay. to weigh up your opponents to see where they are. And you're wheel to wheel with Don't know who's talking and why they're talking. So it's the 2015. Why I went so weird there. It is the 2015 Ford Mustang GT we want. So that's the badger there. Try and gauge the profile of your opponent right. Livery select. I couldn't see this in the last one. So what kind of? It's not going to matter because we're using the cockpit view obs. Let's see what we've got. There is a uh, there's a guy down the road from me actually, or down the road, a little way from me, who does actually have a yellow Mustang with black stripes. So I think in honor of that particular person, we will do that. That particular person, by the way, does appear to be a douchebag. Not because he has a Mustang with, which is yellow with black stripes, because that's quite cool. I've only seen him once and it was raining. It was in the early morning, so I was on my way to work. Here's where you choose which track. Where you chase the track, yes, okay. Um, it, was, it was raining, it was murky. Every car had their like normal full night lights on. Um, and that, idiot was out in his mirrored aviator sunglasses and he ended up behind me at the traffic lights down the road and he was still wearing his mirrored aviator sunglasses behind the wheel on a really dreary miserable day and that was the moment i decided that guy was an a-hole because seriously dude just take your glasses off even if you have to wait you're in the car you've got somewhere to put them anyway so we're going to be doing silverstone same as we did in project cars which looks something like this. So that's the start finish straight there. And it is the yes, yeah, the full track, the 3.6 mile one. So we did get a little bit confused last time, just trying to last time trying to figure out the uh, opponent settings is where you decide the opponent's skill, skill level, level, size of the grid, well the class the size of the car. Of the grid, the car yep, okay. Um, we'll leave it at has mm, that gone up? Can it default to 50 beforehand in the other game? I'll go to 120, so okay, so it's still smack bang in the middle. That's fine. We'll leave the aggression as normal. We'll leave them in identical just because it was identical last time as well. So that's fine. That's fine. Race settings. Race settings is where you configure all the options. We do want laps. We will uh, change the number of laps down a little bit. We'll put it down to four laps. I think there's only two before and two didn't seem enough really. Uh, default date? Yeah, I guess so. Session, session start time. We put down to 4 o'clock because that was what it was off. We'll leave that. Uh, we'll change the weather to bright sun, which is what it was. That music is all over the shop. Jesus. A uh, stand and start. We don't want any of that crazy roll and start stuff. We want a session, practice se session. Um, 10 minute duration? Might have to set that even up a little bit. We'll change these to 2 o'clock as well. And we'll change them up to 15 minutes. Oh no, we'll, we'll leave... Oh, I don't know what to do. Ah, sorry, we'll leave it at 10. We'll leave it at 10. And we'll put all of this on Bright Sun as well. 
Well, in fact, no, I will change this. Let's have a look at it in a slightly different weather condition. I don't want rain. God, no, I don't want rain. Oh, you've got fog and everything now. What's this? Like a haze. Um, let's just go with, like, overcast, shall we? Let's just go with overcast. A bit of heavy cloud. We'll go with that. And then the qualifying we shall do at 2 o'clock as well. And we should change this one. Or should we leave it a light cloud? What's that class? That's medium cloud. What's that one then? Overcast. We'll go with a bit of light cloud, shall we? Okay, so Mustang GT 2015, 15 opponents at Silverstone and the full GP circuit. Two o'clock for four laps with a practice and a qualifying. All right then, let's give it a go. Now I did have my buns configured last time so I could use the menus without going to the mouse. I have brought over my wireless rollerball mouse today. So I actually have some way of controlling the game <laughs> rather than just using the buttons on the steering wheel or using my gaze control. So I'm sure last time the gaze control, while well, saying that, I was going to say the gaze control would was always active. I suppose I wasn't using a mouse, so I was using essentially keyboard it's input. It's race time. As you so, look around the pre-race yes, menu, so the buttons that control the, the up and down You'll also don't seem be to able work to anymore. Map of the track. Let's get rid of that guy. Practice is about getting some yeah. Oh. The pit box may oh no, there still does... Okay, so it does. Still the same up and down buttons. So that's fine. And then that should be drive. Okay. So we'll see what the... Um, performance is like to start with I guess that's the concern oh I don't like the map I don't like the map I'm immediately into manual control which I was not expecting I don't like the map at all why have I got a map HUD layout display edit screen allows you to reposition and yep that's fine um cockpit how do I just get rid of the map um is it you yeah, map. No, go. Go away. Oh, God. Edit HUD layout. I just want to get rid of you. Okay, I am back. So I found the options. Um, I couldn't figure out a way of changing the HUD. I'm sure there is a way of changing the HUD, but I could not get that sorted in the middle of the game. So I had to come out of the race. And yeah, if you go into gameplay options and then into the on-screen guides and display. So in here we have it. So we will turn the track map off. I do not want the track map. Uh, starting grid lights will leave on cockpit wheel driver. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I want, I want that. Um, it's proximity indicator off. Yes, yes, yes. We want Imperial, don't we? Yeah, we want Imperial because we're crazy British people. That's how we roll. Okay, so let's give that a go. I can't believe I couldn't figure out how to remove it from the HUD. That seems insane to me. It must be such an easy way of doing that. So Mustang, Silverstone, blah, 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 start. So does that mean that I have to adhere to the pit lane speed restrictions? I have to do that manually sort of thing. Because it gave me immediate control that I was not expecting. Okay. Right, right. Here we go. Here we go, right. So let's just go straight to drive. Right, that's better. Ah, oh, that is the end of the pit lane, okay. What's my, uh... Can't find the handbrake. But that's okay, I don't suppose we're gonna use the handbrake all that much. Right, okay. Really bad start. Really bad start. It does feel a lot different immediately. So I don't really have a nearby gear indicator like we did in Project Cars 1. Not that that's a bad thing, but it threw me off a little bit. Yeah, you can see how much it's... Uh, how it's controlling different. It's immediately a lot more realistic, isn't it? Need to try and get that before it... Uh, Oh, that was a bit late. Kept it on track though, just about. Oh, he says. Oh, he says. Yeah, so I turned the damage visual indication on, but not any actual 
effects from it for the moment. We don't seem to have any silly mirror at the top of the screen. That must just be for external view. So this is the back straight then. So this is the straight that I think the MotoGP guys actually use. Because the... That's not my fault. The main straight, the new one at Silverstone. I'm sure it's Silverstone where they have this. There isn't enough space for all of the bikes. It's because they have three classes of MotoGPs. So there's not enough space for all the bikes to actually fit in. It does feel so different. So different. Go around the outside, riding the outside. Yeah. It does feel, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's crazy how different it is, really. Same car, same track. I mean, not quite the same conditions. It'll be a slightly cooler track, but nonetheless. In terms of assists, I've put it on sort of realistic assists. So basically you get whatever assist the car has in real life. So this probably has ABS and traction control. So I probably have those by default in here. All right, here we go for a first flying lap. But none of my braking lines sorted. It doesn't have, as you may have noticed, the dark lines denoting where the standard braking lines are. That was way too slow way too slow. You got right in my way. That's terrible. All right, that track's invalid. Well, that lap is invalid, I should say. It did actually seem to swing out of the way then, which was a nice little touch. Because the main issues I have heard about the game really do come down to the AI being a little bit gung-ho. Particularly when there's a lot of cars on track and they're all fighting for the same racing line. But I think I mentioned that in the last video, didn't I? Nice little bit of movement from the wheel there. That down to second, probably shouldn't be second, should probably should be third. Oh yeah, it's sliding out there. Definitely feels a lot slippier than the last game. Like my traction is definitely not where it was last time. But you can feel it a lot more in the wheel. I did feel it when I lost the back end in the car in in the first one. But I am finding it a struggle to get anywhere close to the sort of line I was keeping in the last one. I think that's a little bit because I don't have the braking line, like the visual braking line it gave you in the previous one. That wasn't too bad. Bit too much, bit too much all over the shop. Seems to be running okay at all these high settings as well, which is nice. So how are we doing? So I'm obviously using the manual gearings as well. I don't have any of that automatic nonsense. As I mentioned also in the last video, I had to drive the automatic car this week and uh, can't say I enjoyed the experience. Probably should have gone down to third there, but no matter. And then here, this is going to be those really tight hairpin corners. We'll come around. Ooh. Dude. Now you messed up my gear, which is going to mess up my run onto the straight. It looks better, doesn't it? Just looking at the wheel and the cockpit and the stuff, it definitely there's definitely a marked improvement there. Oh, I just can't get any contact on that first corner. Any grip, I should say, not contact. Maybe that's because I actually played the first one a fair bit. I'm just used to having, you know, slightly less realistic. It's got that bit of flicker on that, that same bit of... Uh, track boundary there that we had in the first one. Ah, so did you see that message that popped up there? It looked like it said, slow down to avoid a race penalty. It seems to off course at the time. 
So they must, rather than immediately penalizing you, say you have to keep to a certain speed if you're going off course for too long. Otherwise it's classed as trying to gain an unfair advantage. That's quite nice. We only have three minutes of this session remaining. It's taking me about two and a half minutes to do a lap. Maybe I should have done it. I didn't do too long a session. I thought 10 minutes would probably be fine just because I know the track a bit and the braking lines from doing it last time. That is really not the case. So qualifying is gonna be a horrendous disaster. We need to get a little bit of braking in here. Shift down, ooh, slide it around there. Way too much slide. Very shiny car in front, isn't it? Very chrome. Oh, oh, you feel it back end sliding around all over the shop. Immediately, the feel of the car, like I say, I, I do drive, but I'm not exactly much of a racer. I don't really have a boy racer phase or anything, and I've certainly never driven a car on a circuit unless you count a go kart. But it feels good, the wheel feels really good, like the feedback you're getting from the track and from the car. I am immediately feeling like I have to be a lot more careful with just slamming down the accelerator. Like I actually have to be a bit more gentle with applying the pressure and getting the power down. Oh, you son of a bitch. That's my lap time invalidated. I bet his isn't. All right, here we go. So I'm again using the paddles to do the, uh, oh, what am I doing? To do the gear shifts. I'm not using the manual stick, even though this one is. Yeah, this one is. Slow down to avoid being, being given a penalty by race control. Oh, I don't know why. I don't really have time for that, mate, to be honest with you. That's because I, cut the, it's I cut the track, so it determined how much I was uh, gaining, I guess. Oh, this is only halfway round. I'm never going to get another lap in. Oh, bugger. All right, so yeah, on to qualifying pretty quickly. Which, as we said, is going to be pretty hilarious. That was never quite as tight as I think it's going to be, but I still managed to slide it around. I think I'm just smashing the accelerator on straight away to be a bit more, a bit more finesse. A bit more finesse, a bit more finesse. There we go, that was nice. That wasn't nice, oh my god. One of the first corners I actually thought, oh, I did quite well with that. Did quite well with that. And this is the final lap, as it just said, because the lap session is over, the time is out. Don't think that phrasing was very good, but there we go. So, what, 224 was my best lap, or was that the lap of the... So it was 207 and 208, wasn't it? I'm sure last time, in Project Cars 1, I'm sure the times I was doing was 207 and 208, so quite why that's so drastically different. What's changed in the game to make those times so odd, unless I'm remembering it wrong. I think it was 227 and 228, that would make sense, I guess. Yeah, oh God. Everything was terrible. Everything was terrible. Lap time deleted, well that's fine, it was nowhere near it anyway. And then on to the home straight. Should have gone into pits then, of course. Huh. Also, it's like a little tire gauge, I see. Yeah, so the fastest time was 2.24, and mine... 2.34, only 10 seconds off. It's not as bad as it could have been, to be honest. Considering I probably only had one lap, which is actually even vaguely classable as decent. 
right eye. There we go. Right, let's continue. I'm not going to listen to him, I just want to get out there as soon as I can. Get as much track time as possible. Okay, so we have nice cool tyres. Let's take it a little bit easy if we can this first lap. Try and get those tyres. Oh my god, it's that stupid corner, isn't it? I'm going to ignore that penalty warning because I don't think I'm probably going to go fast enough to actually compare any penalty anyway. So we'll see what they say. We'll test it a little bit. Right, this is that long sweeping corner. Keep it on the course, keep it on the course. Not ideal, but we've kept it on the course at least. And this other long sweeping corner. You can hear the tyres squeal in there. Coming up to temperature a little bit now, starting to warm up. Down onto the back straight. Clip the curve there, which I could hear, and I think I could feel in the... So this is the tight one, isn't it? No, this is not the tight one, this is the non-tight. We'll go down to three for it. Yeah, that was quite nice. Bit of an improvement there. Didn't quite use all the track, which would have been ideal, but still. And then this is where we need to get a little bit better here, coming around this corner. A bit too slow, but we kept it on track at least. Change it down so I can hear the cars a little bit under revving. That was terrible, way too slow. Yeah, you can definitely feel the curves and the force feedback, which I'd expect, and I'm sure you did last time as well. I'm sure it's Project Cars. Was it Project Cars I read that in VR the mirrors weren't actually 3D depth? In Project Cars 1 and in Project Cars 2 they were going to make them so they properly actually had depth to them. Probably should have come around that in third rather than fourth, as I thought I was already in. These are these super tight ones. So we'll go down to second, come around there. And then we need to come nice and smooth around here. He says immediately getting that wrong. Wasn't quite high enough in the revs till I hit when I hit third gear there, fourth gear there. So this is the slightly tighter one. Took it a little bit late. Oh. Regain control of the car, beautiful. And this is the tight one, this is the tight one. Just about kept it on track there, which I think is probably more than I can say for any other time I've done it. That's a full on hairpin, which I don't think I was really aware. I think I've only taken that course once so far this uh, video. Up into third, clip that. Ooh. A bit too much accelerator as we came out of the corner there. Lost the back end again a bit. Right, this is the long looping one, so we'll go down to third. Should be in third, yes. Oh, he's trying to push me out. Then I'm gonna come back in over here. Oh, slide in a bit, slide in a bit. Start accelerating. That wasn't too bad. Back onto this back straight again. I actually got a little bit of time on him. I don't know if that's because he uh, eased off rather than I had any sort of skill. Coming around here, that's, that's not too bad. A little bit of slide again, so not obviously far from, far from perfect, but it wasn't bad. And these corners here, a little bit of braking. Drop it down into third. I have to break here. Probably don't need second. Oh, I don't know. I did go pretty slow. Definitely lost too much speed because he got right up on me then. Seems to be running pretty well. I was a little bit concerned because Project Cars 1 was relatively unoptimized. So I did think Project Cars 2 was going to struggle a little bit. And I know I've only got it on high settings and it's only outputting 1080 to the monitor. That is the standard definition for most people. That's the guy who whacked in the qualifying, uh, in the practice. 
Oh, completely lost it then, completely lost it. You see my, it's completely lost control of the car there. Can you see that back at home? Oh, don't go off track. I need that time. Can't guarantee I'm gonna have another time which is gonna be anywhere near sensible. So you don't, oh, I was gonna say, you don't really need to brake at all there, but you really do. You really do. He got right in my way, didn't he? Probably should have come down to second. Oh, this hairpin gets me every time. Bit more gentle on the acceleration there. So I didn't just immediately kick it out. Used all the inside of that curb there, which was nice. Now we're going to come around to these looping hairpins, aren't we? These long looping hairpins. So we're going to break down, go down to third. I wouldn't say we're anywhere near the apex there, but it'll do. Again, probably should have gone down to second for that. Is that the end of the no halfway through so this is the this is the back straight oh god i messed it up we already messed it up previously though didn't we i guess you can hear him oh there he is a little bit of break yeah i can definitely do that one in four and here we're probably going to have to come down into third Do let me know if you guys would like to see a series on Project Cora, uh, Project Cora. Project Cars 2. I'm not generally intending on doing one, although I would very much like to. I do have a few series on going at the minute. So it would push the schedule all out by another day or two. I wanted to let him go there. We had some very weird flicker there in the screen. Don't know if you guys saw that. But I would love to do a series on Project Cars too. So if there is any enthusiasm for it out there, watching me trying to race through a career, actually get used to the steering wheel again and see if I can achieve anything useful. Ah, so a bit of a faster time, but we did invalidate the track several times. I'm not sure if that's gonna actually count or not. Didn't see it come up and say that it wasn't going to. Definitely should have shifted down at some point there, but we didn't. Oh, this is those tight corners, tight corners, tight corners. Down into second. Definitely not very fast. And this is that hairpin that I always forget about. This will probably be, yeah, I didn't think that would be any good. This is gonna be our last lap, isn't it? Oh, he's gone off course. Oh, he smashed the car. Didn't get time invalidated, so maybe that counted as him coming into me. Seems a little bit hit and miss on that, doesn't it? I did want to put into the pitch to see if the pit crews are any different to last time. Should have done that in the practice, I guess, shouldn't I? So we slowed down probably way too much for that. Yeah, way too much. We were, what, three seconds off before, so we can see if we can get that down a little bit. Don't think we're going to, but you never know. down to second for this one. Yeah, two seconds off. What's our previous time? 2.30. So I think I'm gonna really struggle to get this back before the time runs out, which is gonna be a shame. To do with that extra lap out here. Oh, I can't get that corner very good either. Now it's going to be a slower lap, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pop into the pits and 
see how this looks. I'm definitely not going to beat my time. Okay, that's oh, can I not see it now? Oh, you bugger. What did I come? Oh, I came last. I don't know why I'm even asking. Yeah, I came last. Five seconds off. 2.30, so slower than my qualifying time. And they were slower than their uh, practice time. They were slower than their practice time as well. I'm trying to see when the pits come up if... Uh, is it going to send me right through? Is it going to go in? I can't see anything at all. I've got no idea. All right, no worries. Loose and loose. Oh, well, so if we just... Oh, that's just... Race engineer. I was hoping he'd sort of suggest things. Oh, yeah, I keep sliding when I'm braking. Hmm. Oh. I do keep spinning out in fast corners. Increasing the rear downforce. This can't be adjusted. Look at the suspension, see if there's anything we can do there. Car doesn't turn into corners, that's kind of accurate. Where in the corner? When turn no, it's maybe a bit more out on the exit, isn't it? We'll do throughout, see what it says. Let's stiffen the anti-roll bars, okay. I think the, the gearing's over. I was saying that we never hit our top speed, have we? Can't hit my top speed. No, not even close to it. Okay, so we'll, we'll go back. Obviously, we should have played done a bit more of that, I suppose, in the uh, practice. If I go into the arc, I can just do it on myself there. This is where if you know what you're doing, you could probably get yourself quite an advantage, I'd have thought. Unfortunately, I'm a bit of a moron when it comes to it. What I was really hoping... Well, I suppose that, that, the way that the Project Cars 1 did that as well, didn't it? Where I just asked you what was wrong. I do quite like that. We'll save those changes. Uh, we'll save it to a new slot. We'll just click create and we'll just... Ah. I don't have my keyboard on me, do I? Uh, if I say continue... Ah, because that has my own name on it now, okay. Right, so let's go back and let's just start the... Re oh, I don't have my, um... Handbrake, I don't know what my handbrake is. Must be one of the buttons on the... Gear shift. If I don't put it in gear... Terrible start. Terrible start, but that's not too bad. We'll catch up. We will catch right... I don't know, I'm looking in my mirror. Like I'm expecting to see something. All argy-bargy, but not as bad as I saw in some of the Project Cars 2 videos. No one... There wasn't that huge kerfuffle, so they may have improved that a little bit since the... Uh, since the press preview. And maybe in the nicest I've taken that corner yet. I lost a little bit of speed there. I put it down for four laps. Well, I think that suspension, that anti-roll bar, has made a bit of a difference, you know? I do feel like it doesn't quite kick out as much. Ah, so you can see all of the cysts it's got there next to the next to the gear number. So you can see when you're using your ABS or others. Oh, that's gone wrong. That's gone wrong. Went even worse for that guy. I'm all right with that. It does seem I'm not going to do quite as well as I did in my Project Cars 1 video, doesn't it? Ah, yeah, our gearing's all different. Went up to fifth then. Changing that gearing ratio has really made a bit of a difference. Don't recall ever getting up to fifth there before, unless I just got the gearing wrong, of course. It's a nice switched up too soon.
Yeah, it's definitely a bit better. And then we just slow right down here for these really tricky tight corners. So obviously we have a little bit of distance to make up on that car, oh bugger, on that car in front, and I'm not sure we're really going to do that, particularly if I keep driving like that. They don't seem to be quite as bunched up as they were in Project Cars 1, it was quite easy just to smash through the pack, wasn't it? Doesn't seem quite as easy to do that here, oh my god. Yeah, and that guy behind me is starting to catch up as well. I am 11th, I only finished 10th in the last one, so if I can hold this guy off behind me, that's not too bad. Oh, he is very close now though. I don't think I'm gonna be able to hold him off for very long. Nice smooth acceleration though out of that corner. Getting a bit used to the finesse with that pedal. See, I gained a bit of time on them there, coming out the corner. I'm just not gaining on these people, and this is where I'm going to lose it. Ah, oh, way too fast. Ah, oh, my God. Unsurprisingly, lost 11th position then. Need to get that corner better. Should definitely spend a little bit more time in practice, popping into pits and changing things up my mistake. I will learn from my mistakes. See that went quite well didn't it? Ten second delta on my previous best lap which should have been from the race. Might get rid of that little thing hovering in the middle of the screen, that sort of delta timing. That's a little bit. Oh my god, went far too far in the gears, the engine over revved, wasn't paying attention. Took that corner way too wide. Down to second for this one. Ooh. Lost the grip on the braking a little bit. Ah, I need to stop doing that. I need to stop doing that. Just trying to look through the nose gap to see if it does do the G27 wheel has those indicators on the the rev indicators on the on the top of the wheel. I'm trying to show you when you should change gear, just seeing if it actually had those, which it does, which is nice. I assumed it would work out of the box, but you never know. Oh my god. Honestly, sometimes what is the point? I'm gonna have to wait for this guy, I suppose, aren't I? Otherwise they're gonna penalise me. Oh no, I'm alright. I'm alright, penalise myself. Penalise myself, gone straight back into last, haven't I? Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Well, that screwed the race for me, hasn't it? Well and truly screwed the race for me. I was just looking at how much time I've been recording to see if I could squeeze in another race, but I don't think I'm going to. I was 10 seconds ahead now, I'm 10 seconds behind. I lost 20 seconds during the latter third of that course, or the middle third, I suppose I should say. So, so this is the end of the lap, isn't it? Sure it is. the smoothest but it'll do a little bit of braking come around there that's quite nice shift it down for this one back onto full throttle They're absolutely miles away aren't they 
doesn't seem to tell me quite far how ahead they are. It doesn't have like a gap indicator as far as I can see. That seemed a bit better coming around there, didn't it? Little bit of tire squeal, but we did okay. And then come down to second for these, a little bit too much slip there. Did I go down to first? I went down to first. That's oh, never going to get very far. Alright. So this last lap, we will try our best at having a relatively smooth, relatively fast lap. corners and this one here as well right okay that's not too bad see what that thing's doing there that little um delta timer i don't mind the idea but i'd prefer it more for like actual doing race timings or during the practice or something i don't really care so much during the race and i can always get it at the section times anyway. I suppose it tells you exactly, yeah, but that's why it tells you exactly where you're gaining or losing time, but again, I'd rather have that during a practice, maybe in a qualifying, but not in a race. Oh, really kicked the end out, the back end out of there a little bit of time. And we'll come around there. And then we're going to have to go down the gear for this, go down into third. A little bit of slide, but we kept it under control, which is lovely. Still not as fast as a fast lap. I'm pretty sure our fastest lap did include two sections where we managed to cut the course a bit. And it didn't really pick up on it particularly well. A bit of gentle braking. Late apex, no. Caught the apex of that little one there. That were outside apex, I guess you would call it. Down into second, not into first. Bit wide on that second hairpin part there. And then build up the speed. Not too much, so we don't reach that. And over we go. Yeah, 30 seconds behind the leaders there, but that last lap was okay. If we spent a bit more time practicing, I think we would probably have been... I mean, obviously not in the top three. But we would have been better, I think, is the point I'm making. Well, there we go then. That is Project Cars 2. I don't know what that you feel. Oh, is that your license? This is your driver oh, network hello. profile. Here you can view your competitive, competitive uh, racing license. Yes, that's what that's going to be. Affinity, so your favourite tracks and cars. Obviously, my favourite control type is the wheel. There's a little point in buying it otherwise. So, yeah, there we go. That's Project Cars 2. Do let me know, like I say, if you'd like to see a series on it, a career series. I would very happily do one. At the moment, I'm leaning towards not at the moment, just so I can focus on the series I have ongoing. But if you would be very keen to see one, do let me know, and I'll very happily add one in. Either just extend the schedule of the existing one, so everything's like staggered back by another day. Or just, I am trying to do two videos every time I do a planet coaster, so there's a VR and a standard monitor based game, so. And this week I have done a couple of days, so there's been two videos where I've done the planet, uh, the project cars and that sort of thing. And I did do one and a second video on my planet coaster day as well, so it is possible. So let me know if you'd like to see that and I will definitely get on that for you. And I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that look at Project Cars 2. Obviously, there's a lot of videos out there already who had the pre-release and the early release versions of the full version of the game. So there's a lot of information out there. And I'm definitely not the best driver in the world to show these things to you. But 
that's what it looks like when you're not that good, I guess. And hopefully that gives you a nice comparison as well, because I don't think I've seen anyone do that, where they have a direct comparison race with same course, same track, same course, same track, it's the same thing. Same track, same car, same weather. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of how the game's changed a bit. It definitely does feel a bit better. It looks a little bit better. It sounds all right. I mean, I don't know if there's any issues with the sounds before, so I don't think that's going to be a big problem anyway. The music is super dramatic that I don't recall having that previously as being quite as mental as that. So that's, I guess that's nice. Who knows? All right, then. If you did enjoy that, please do click the like button. It is genuinely, honestly, very much appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and leave any comments down below. Like I say, particularly whether you'd like to see me do that as a series. Do let me know if that's something you'd want. Otherwise, I shall see you next time, possibly in Project Cars 2, possibly in anything else. Who knows? Thank you very much for joining me. I forgot whether a joiner was. What an idiot. Thank you for joining me.